this is a question from Notice, who asks, have you guys seen the tiny black blocks? I can't type crafted quads. From crafted quads? I have not. Let's look at it. Oh, yeah, no, I think we did cover this on the news. This is a black box, a tiny, tiny black box logger. The selling point is that it is ultra, ultra small, so it could be used even on, like, uh, tiny whoops. It's ultra small and ultra light. Um, well, I think we must I think we must have covered this on the news, Blunty, because I've seen this before, and I don't know where else I would have seen it. Is it the same as open logger? Well, I, I couldn't say if it's the same as open logger or not. It does look like it has up to 8 kilohertz logging rate. The big selling point of open logger is that it supports really, really high baud rates. I think up to 5 megabaud. Uh, so it can do faster logging rates that uh, you normally can't do to an SD card. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's very cool if you want to do black box logging, I guess is what I'll say. It's very cool yeah, if you want to uh, do black box logging. Just just for a little more info, I put the disk, um, link in Discord for the project. But this mm -hmm. is basically a GitHub project that uh, Crafted Quads did runs of, mm -hmm. or did a run of. Um, but oh, so any, anyone could this, make one one of these. Yeah, you could source. also make one of these if you wanted to. It's open sourced. Uh, it's just a better option because it's so much smaller and lighter mm -hmm. than an open logger. And that's why people are typically looking for something like that. Gotcha. Um, so I, I think it, it's it's different from open logger in that it's a separate project, but they serve they seem to serve the same purpose. I don't know if there are some technical differences that I'm not aware of. Um, Darwin FPV Tiny Ape DJI 03 2.5 inch 3S. Thoughts? Um, what are my thoughts? That's interesting. Oh, we got the vertical mount of the 03. I don't know. I'd have to see it fly, man. This guy right here is a winner. This is a really fun form factor. Um, it's like, and at the price, 175, you know, it's worth, it's worth the price. I don't know. I, I'd have to see how this flies. It's clever what they've done to try to, like, fit it into the wheelbase. But uh, I don't know what it's done to the CG and the handling characteristics. When the FPV camera is significantly higher than the prop line, then when you roll, it kind of swings around in a way that a lot of people, they don't necessarily know why, but they think it makes the quad fly better. Generally, there has been work to bring the camera down to the prop line historically, and that tends to make people like the way the quad flies better. I wouldn't it be immediately like f fall in love with this. I'd want to test it out. I'm a little skeptical about it. What's the best analog goggles for a beginner that is not breaking the bank? Um, Eoshin EV 800 DM or Fat Shark Echo are good choices at about a hundred dollars. The question is, should I just go with Goggles X from the beginning? That's a budgetary question. That's a budgetary question. If you can't afford it, you probably will just stick with digital for the rest of your FPV career. Spikester asks, does BL Heli 32 not support current sense via ESC telemetry? I can't get it to work on the FETTEC FC. It always reports zero. So here's the thing, Spikester. BL Heli 32 supports it, but many ESCs do not. Many ESCs do not. Um, the reason for that is that for the ESC to support current sense, uh, BL Heli 32 current sense, they need four separate shunt resistors, one for each ESC, and that takes up a lot of space on the board, and manufacturers did that for a little while and then stopped, and now no one does it. So nowadays, basically no ESC is going to report current via BL Heli telemetry. What they'll do is they'll have a single large shunt resistor for the entire ESC, and they'll do analog current sense. And, that, and that's how they'll get current sense into the flight controller. 
So you're you're you, basically you're not going to be able to do it with that ESC because the designer of the ESC didn't implement it. Chalmelian asks, um, I just got into FPV and I got a Pavo Pico. What drone do you recommend between the Mobile 8, Gep RC 20, or the Pavo 2.0? Uh, I would take the Gep RC 20. Mobile 8 is solid too, and I think a little lighter than the Gep RC 20. The Pavo 2.0 would be my last choice. Is two antenna Gemini mode worth it with a five inch? Thank you for ten dollars, uh, Nether Poisson. Um, Gemini mode provides increased link quality at the margins. So if your LQ is already as good as you want it to be, and you're te you tend to fly close in, then Gemini is not really got a point. When you find that you're, if you're regularly flying and you find that your LQ is kind of dropping below, say, uh, 90, if you're regularly in the 80s or below and you're at the edge of your range, then Gemini will improve that a little bit. But it's not going to, like, double your range. It's going to give more link stability at the edge of range and increase your range slightly but it's mostly about link stability, not necessarily about just more range. Krum asks, uh, this is my first foray into LEDs on my latest build. Why shouldn't I flash with the 64 LEDs upgrade? Any downside? I assume it's not enabled by default because lower end MCUs can't run it. Yeah, um, well, the th Krum, the thing uh, I would say about that is that, well, it, it, uh, I think that once we went to cloud builds and a whole lot of shit got knocked out of the program so that the program got a lot smaller, I feel like cloud builds freed up a lot of space, okay? And so, it, you know, there used to be every Betaflight build had all the features and then they ran out of space and then they knocked a bunch of stuff out. It feels to me, and like if a dev says different, then obviously they know and I don't. I don't know the actual numbers, like how big the code is. But it feels to me like pretty much any modern flight controller, if you wanted to enable the 64 LED thing, then you could. As long as you're not also enabling a bunch of other shit that makes your code too big. And if your code is too big, then it's just going to tell you when you try to flash it and be like, hey, your code doesn't fit, if that's even possible. Um, as far as processing power, I don't, my guess would be that it's more about memory and code uh, s size storage than about processing. And I would probably feel fine flashing the 64 LED uh, on pretty much any flight controller. That's my take on it. It's a little bit out of my butt, you know, because uh, I'm not a dev and I don't know, like, if there's some reason why the 64 LED upgrade, like, causes a problem, but... I would I would just flash it sure